In there. So it's just now going to be showing up here soon, so I might have to step away just for a minute. Oh, looks like Chris can't play. I think we'll have to cancel until next week. Oh, shucks, guys. Sorry. Darn. What a... Whew. Uh, we were so we close. Went live too. We uh, so so want to do it too. Yeah. Oh. It, uh, I well, every, uh, hi everyone. We'll see you next week. We, we gotta yeah, cancel gosh, for. Man. Yep. Again, it, grocery is real important. You you understand? Yep. You know. Anyway. Totally wanted to do this too. God, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. No, okay. not 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 going. That's our character. That's our characters talking. Our by the way, that's our characters Welcome. talking. By the way, we are excited to play. They um, don't want to do this. I think we're still playing. I'm kind of thrown off here, but um, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, what are we doing, I'm Pathfinder? Ben, <laughs> I am the dungeon master here at the Heroes Era, and um, tonight with me I have Chris as P. Crawl. Yes, sorry, I've had a mouthful of food still. I don't usually go first. I am Chris playing me crawl. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen tonight, guys? We're all on here for the ride. It's a little wacky. Along with us. <laughs> that's all I got. Oh, that was it. Okay. That's that it. That's perfect. it. That's all. That's the best you get from me. <laughs> Joel as Lunar. Lunar Tazar. Different character, but still the same amount of fireballs. And Bodie is Reynold. Happy to have spell slots this boss fight. Really, really, really liking it. That is and... a nice change. Sorry, I just didn't catch it. Um, tonight we are playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and we are telling a story, but we do not yet know how it will go. The players, the dungeon master, the dice... All of these will have a hand in how the game unfolds. This is the hero's era. Bum, bum, bum. Nailed it. Solid intro, guys. Uh, and last time when we left off, um, you all were seeking the scepter and the robes of the Dragon Watcher. And you've come to Devil's Cauldron. Uh a region of active volcanoes on the first habitable continent of Gira on Thold. And uh, you've followed Lady Murthash here. Uh, she got a bit of a head start on you, actually uh, taking your dragon elves. And so um, you all have arrived. And at the end of last game, you were following a group of uh, dancing Azers. Um, these are dwarf-like uh, fire creatures and they would dance emulating the shape uh, and movement of a dragon and as you uh, moved ahead of them on the trail seeking to avoid them uh, suddenly as they approached from behind a large red dragon uh, emerged from the lava and spewed its fiery breath upon you as well as all of the Azers, but they celebrated and cheered, uh, reveling in the flame here. And that's where we left off, rolling initiative. And we're gonna start at the top of this with P. Crawl. <clears throat> oh, good. <laughs> um, okay, P. Crawl is going to... Okay. Um, the 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 landscape here. Remind me again what, as far as like the so like this is is this all solid ground? Right. So the darker color okay. is ground essentially. Um, the pockmarked mm -hmm. lava rock is there to indicate that sometimes the lava, you know, will surge over its current level. But the red is all lava. This is lava. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. The dragon there is within lava. And then the lava central to the volcano there is emitting flames. And uh, yes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, okay. 
Okay, we're going to try a slightly different approach than what I normally do because I'm not going to call a bunch of bears up to get sucked into lava pits. That seems kind of wasteful of my uh, big spells and my concentration. So instead, I'm going to... Um, I mean, I'm going to uh, cast haste on myself. <clears throat> so I got a plus two bonus to my AC, advantage on deck saves, and um, I get an extra action on each turn. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to cast haste on myself, and then okay. I am going to... Now, it's an action to cast haste, but now that that's on there, I immediately get that additional action, right? So I can make an Very attack good. this round, too? Yes. I, I'm, I'm asking. Yes? Okay. Yes, I agree that, That's that. what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. So, all right. So then I'm going to run up to, to Mr. Dragon Guy, and I'm going to... Um, use my teleportation, like my pre-attack teleport to basically bamf up 10 feet up in the air to take a slice at him in the, in the face and then bamf 10, uh, and then, you know, bamf 10 feet back down and take a slice at him at, at, at his chest. Can I, um, Very good. Can I get to it from where I'm at? Yeah, I, I should be able to. Yes. And then, and then um, I'm going to use my movement after that to, so that's 10, 15, 25, 30, 5. Well, actually, I'm just going to drop back to here. Um, all right, let me roll those two attacks. Uh, oh, didn't mean to do that with advantage. That's unfortunate, too, because I don't think that 12 is going to hit. I miss. <laughs> All right. Second attack. There it is. Hey. -o. That's a crit. Nice. All right. Okay, and I am going to um Oh wait, can I add Hang on a second. I'm sorry. I just got to double check one thing really really quick. I meant to add this onto my character sheet so hey, I could other, see it faster. Players, did you know that if you click the box by your name on roll 20, you can change your the color of your dice no yeah. i didn't oh yeah you didn't know that uh, no told me that uh, the other day wow i i was just yeah. lucky that it was red because that kind of fit with my nickname <laughs> that i gave right. myself oh no that's that that, that uses my it. concentration okay never mind i thought i could sneak some extra damage onto that crit but no all right so it'll be um 17 points of slashing damage total okay from that and then I'm going to drop back to there, and I am going to – oh, I should have done this at the beginning. That's what I meant to do. That's fine. I'm going to slap it on there now. I'm going to use my Planar Warrior. Um... Oh, wait. No, I can't use that now because it's only for the turn. Never mind. So that's it. I'm done. Okay. And after P-Crawl is Lunar. Okay. Uh, so, from my point of view, he's standing essentially next to me, right? Yes, just ten feet away. Okay, the, I want my dragon. I want to close the distance to get within melee. Okay, very good. And I am going to uh, use my channel divinity. Second, still new to this. No worries. I can't believe you don't remember everything on your character <sighs> that you I made know, right? like a month ago and haven't played since. <laughs> so it's going to be uh, Channel Divinity, uh, Vow of Anemone. Yep. I will click on it. Very good. Wow. <laughs> so as a bonus action, I can utter a vow of omnity against a creature within 10 feet of me. 
Uh, I gain advantage on attack rolls against creatures for against that creature for one minute or until it drops to zero hit points or falls unconscious. What? It's crazy what a pal can do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have much faith in your a character because I haven't seen him do anything at all. But after seeing that, I feel like you're good. Yeah, maybe. Right. Wow, dude. A little bit. So fun stuff. You don't have to concentrate on that or anything. That's crazy. Nope. So I also have uh, an ability, uh, a feat actually called Elven Accuracy. Oh no! Which means that anytime I attack with anything except strength, uh, I make three rolls instead of two if I have advantage. Okay. Uh, as a hex blade, I have my hex blade weapon, which allows me to attack with charisma. And I also have a staff of power, so I'm gonna take my staff, my quarter staff, and uh, hit him twice with uh, triple advantage. All right, let's see it. You know, I I was saving to add a plus ten to any of your rolls because I understand you're a paladin and it smites a thing, and I was gonna make sure you get it off. I don't think I have to do that anymore. I think I I can take a step back. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's fine on that. I think he's good. I, you sure? Yeah, I think I think you're fine. <laughs> if you can't hit him at three rolls, then that's on you, bud. Sorry. Yeah, I can't help you, know you there if that's the case. I, <laughs> that's your own problem. Okay, guys, you're gonna have to help me. <laughs> I cannot find my advantage tag. Oh, uh, you it's turn it character. on. How do go you do to that? Your, go to your um at the top of the character sheet next to yeah. spells where it has the little settings thing. Yep. Click on that and right below it where it says roll queries. Um advantage toggle. Yeah, change it to advantage toggle. Got it. It's probably set on like always. Yeah. Perfect. And then that'll give you the option for it. There's two roll twenty tips for you. How to change your color and how to do that. <laughs> Perfect. So now I'm gonna attack with advantage using my power uh staff of power. Uh so I will attack I'll make an attack with advantage, and then I'll roll a regular attack for the third one. Very good. So that would be... Uh, 27 is the highest. Hits. Okay. Four. 10 damage. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and use a base uh, Divine Smite. Roll another 2d8. Dan, it's an impressive staff. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, you <laughs> hate to really see bad. it. Yeah. Uh, one more attack uh, with triple advantage uh, with the staff of power. That'll so that it. is a 31. That'll do it. Awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and use another uh, Divine Smite. Okay. Hopefully a little bit higher this time. I'll take it. For 21, 21 damage. Very good. So that'll be the end of my turn. The dragon before you stands wings outstretched um it cocks its, its head in uh conf confusion for just a second as it inhales deeply shit and again it releases a fiery breath in a giant cone of fire and smoke good news right and lunar and Raymond, it goes directly between us make dexterity <laughs> saving throws you don't you don't say uh, I get a bonus, right? Because I'm next to you. You do. So you get a plus five bonus. Uh, yeah. I don't know if a 14 is going to cut it. Oof. Um, so for me, I get a plus seven because of the staff and my aura. So that would be... <laughs> that Oof. would be not great. <laughs> that would be an eight. Okay, 
So uh, a one and a nine. Yep. Well, a one and a fourteen. I don't know if a fourteen will. Uh, fourteen is <laughs> not going to do it. And a six and a fourteen. <laughs> engulfed in flame. <laughs> Oof. You take fifty-seven damage. All right. I'm st- oh. I take <laughs> only twenty-nine because I have fire resistance. I'm so long ago. P crawl and um, Lunar, please make wisdom saving throws. Wisdom save? Yes, please. Okay. Shit. You I'm have not. a plus five to this if you're within ten feet of me. He I am not. Okay. Um, but I um have. So that's at a plus seven, so it's 18. Okay. Oh, wait, I have advantage on wisdom and saving, uh, wisdom okay. and charisma saving throws. The second roll, please. Or son of a bitch. <laughs> you both become frightened of this dragon's presence and the suddenness, uh, you know, at which it attacked you. I don't, uh, I cannot be frightened. I have a uh, aura. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Very good. Sorry, let me bring that up. That's all right. Go ahead and pull it into the chat for me. I appreciate it. Um, Reynold, if you would, please, you're next. Well, this has gone sour almost immediately. Uh, We're going to try to right off the bat cast. You can't be frightened either, then. No. I got a a funny little uh, dragon breastplate that gives me fire resistance and immunity to dragon fear. Very Very cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast Hold Monster on it. I need it to make a Wisdom save, uh, DC 18. Oh, excuse me. Wrong throw. Second throw is the throw. Um, and the dragon succeeds on the save. All right. Well, I cast that spell at him. I was like, uh, not, nothing happened. Uh. Oh god, here we go. And uh Your spells that's are it? no use here. It says in common. <laughs> yeah, well just you wait, big boy. I'm gonna bring you down. That'll be my turn. I'm not going anywhere. Not that I really can. The dragon uh flaps its wings violently and uh Reynold and Lunar, please make dexterity saving throws. <laughs> That's a 23. That'll be dexterity? Yes, please. Yeah, I don't think that'll do it. Mine's a 23. No, thank you. Um, The wings beat and the uh, strength of them just blasts air into your face. Reynold, you're able to stand your ground, but Lunar, uh, you're thrown prone, and you'll take uh, 13 bludgeoning damage. That is actually enough to knock me unconscious. I took two full dragon breaths. That's pretty impressive. And the dragon wades through the lava, uh, submersing itself so that only its long neck and head uh, are above the lava. And the Azers behind you, uh, they seemed to cheer in reverie of this thing, but Reynold, you hear them, uh, one among them yell, Imposter! That is not Turloflois! And the demeanor of the Azers changes, and so does their formation. And they essentially form two ranks here and begin to wade through the lava themselves. Uh, In some way, they're able to walk upon the molten surface of it. And they unleash a a flurry of crossbow bolts uh, directed uh, in your direction, but arcing far over you and aimed towards the dragon. Oh, oh, I didn't know where that was going. I thought there was going to be strike the dragon 
and the dragon screams, uh, uh, you know, several of them striking its neck as it is already gaining cover beneath the lava. But these are uh, good marksmen, and uh, the dragon seems taken aback here. Next is uh, P. Crawl. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna get into some uh, hijinks and tomfoolery, like I like I am one to do. Um, P. Crawl all hopped up on his haste spell. Is gonna come charging. Whoop, switch over here. He's gonna charge up to this spot. He's gonna leap over the lava. Boom, teleport over the dragon's head. Take a slice down at him. And then teleport the other 10 feet to the other ledge and and spin around and take a, a swat at like his, his, like his, his, his tail or anything sticking out enough that I can take a swing at the back end of him. It'd have to be the back of his neck at this point. I, whatever I can reach. Very good. All right. So I'm going to do that. Oh, smart this time. Before I do that, I'm going to use my bonus action for planar warrior okay and mark him with that okay and first attack uh 17 probably not will not uh will not hit okay second attack come on 25 hey well, that'll do it 25 will do it okay so plus the extra damage from planar warrior this is going to be 21 points of uh, force damage altogether. Okay. I would like to interject, perhaps. I don't know. Where were you on the board when you took your first attack? Right on top of his head. Like dead center on the on the image? Basically, yeah. I was 10 feet away from where I'm at now. Okay. So I would have been I like had... right, right about here. It, I was going to try and give him a plus 10 if he was within 30 feet, but I think he was too far out of range. So... Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, just probably not. Range. I was probably just out of range, yeah. Right, I was like, I always... I, crawl, come on. You gotta get closer to me. I can help you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> so jittery. Okay, but anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that, at that attack, and then um, I'm gonna use the rest of my movement... I'm not sure how much movement I already used, but I have, like, with haste, I have, like, 90 feet of movement, so I'm pretty sure I can get okay. back to the middle of there. That's fine. Yeah. And, Does that um... Provoke? No. No, I have the mobile feet, so anytime I make attacks, I don't I don't get opportunity attacks. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right, I gotta go grab my stuff from the thing, but I'll be right back, okay? No problem. Yep. Hmm. Something pivotal may be happening. <laughs> um, yeah. um, so, I'm sorry. Next is Lunar. So, go ahead, Lunar. Okay. Uh, I believe this would be a death save. Thank you. Does your staff give bonuses to death saves? I got a plus two to all my saves. So, yes. So, this is a d20. At a plus two. Twelve. Okay. So three, you know, three ten or better, and you'll stabilize. Three less than that, and uh, unfortunately, you'll share the fate of Mordecai. Uh. Mm. Well. The... It's you and me, dragon. As, <laughs> as the Azers uh, have unleashed their spears, uh, the dragon again flaps its wings and plunges into the lava and is lost from sight. Sweet, I won. And the lava surges over the dragon and it disappears. Sorry, I'm doing my best to just slightly stall while Chris gets his gro groceries. 
Um, so the Azers that have begin to approach from behind you are dressed in armor that's charred black and their skin is rough like unhewn stone. Um, after the dragon is dispatched and plunges into the lava, uh, the dwarves themselves back out, uh, keeping their ranks with the front line uh, kind of crouching slightly to provide cover from those, or for those in the back who are wielding their crossbows. I can remember if I'm on good terms with Turl's voice or not. I think we may be trying to steal from him, if I remember correctly. Uh, welcome back. Sorry, guys. I'm back. I'm I'm back. Did we kill it? The we left. So yeah. Dragon retreated, and now the hey, the Azers are backing up over the lava flow uh, as well. They seem to be collecting themselves. They shout uh, towards you, Reynold. Are you a dragon lord? Uh, I'm not, like, racially, no, I'm not a dragon, but I, I have a, I'm trying to take a position, the a position of dragon watcher. Dragon watcher. So, then you seem to take from the eternal lord Turloflois. Uh yes. <laughs> I know you guys seem to kind of like him a lot and I know it's kind of robbery of a dragon horde. We cannot allow any to take from the horde of Turloflois. Does Lady Murthash know that you are coming? Uh, I would say yes, she does. And that's the truth. <laughs> she is already gone below. Oh, I should probably try and meet up with her then. After I get this guy up and I just kind of point towards my dying friend on the ground. And do you take action to uh, help Lunar? Uh, yes. I will cast... Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna cast heal on Lunar. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna crouch down and kind of like slap his face a little bit to try and like wake him. I'm like, wait, wake up, wake up! And I pull back, <laughs> and my hand starts glowing golden like energy of the sun. I just slap him real hard and give him sixty flat HP. <laughs> Lunar. Um, among the uh, gathered Azers, there is a, a murmuring. And they kind of, um, kind of awe at the spectacle that has just taken place. <clears throat> Hand of God. <laughs> Indeed. Pakral has just, at the end of that hay spell, just just sprinted down to this very edge right here, and then as he got there, the spell ended, so he gets that that sweep of of lethargy. So he just runs up. He's like, "Hey, hey, wait! Oh, hey, uh, what's going on then? Oh, that's a lot." And he's just looking at you guys, <laughs> trying to figure out what's happening. Well, I slapped Lunar, but he's still asleep. I don't know. <laughs> I slapped him pretty hard, I would say. Yeah. Do it, do it, try it again. Wake you up. gave me hit points, but you knocked me unconscious. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> <laughs> he grabs him by, with, with both hands like, wake up! Wake up, Lunar! So, How are you asleep right now? It's so unbearably hot. <laughs> uh, so I come back with, uh, you said 70 hit points? 60. Oh, 70. Sorry, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll take it. Thank you very much. Uh, I would have... Uh, Maybe used a lower power spell, but I didn't know if that dragon was going to come back and try to kill us immediately. I figured to err on the side of caution. We cannot allow you to go below unless you agree not to steal from the horde of Tulaflos. Hmm. 
if you do have business with Lady Murthash, as you claim, then of course I shall not be stopping you from going, but the Horde is my business. What? Hang on. And uh, I'm going to get Misty Step over here. <laughs> All right. What's going on? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I told him that we're here for some uh, some items that are in Earl of Voices Horde. And they are going to, they're objecting, of course, because it's quite rude to steal from a horde. It's not something you should do under, you know, any circumstances. Uh, and Lady yeah. Murthash is down there. And they're saying that we can go down there just to talk to her and sort out business, but we have to promise not to take anything. All right. We, yeah. we promise? I guess. I, I do. I don't I don't need anything. DM. Yes. Uh, are we... We're here for a staff, correct? Uh, scepter and robes. Okay. And are we under the understanding that these are part of his uh, dragon's horde, or are these sure. separate things that he's safeguarding? <clears throat> so Turlo Flois um, oh, is kind I of playing these uh, for her own, although they are more the property of uh, greater dragon kind. So rightfully, if you're looking for that sense, uh, they are not hers. Um, they would be whoever, they would belong to whichever mortal you know, has the authority and the ability to claim them. So Reynold has some of that authority from um, Periasticles. And some of the authority also from the crown that he wears. <clears throat> All right, so, yeah, like I said, we promise that we will not take anything out of there that, that that's not us. Like, you know, like, like I'm gonna go in with my sword and bring my sword out, right? Because it's mine. Picrol, will you make a persuasion check, please? Persuasion. Can I give uh... him guidance? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm just gonna oh. I'm just gonna give him a pat on the back. All right. Well, that's a D4 with the guidance, right? Yes. All right. So we got a dirty twenty plus one, twenty one. Well, then clearly you are friends of the dragons. And we do not fully understand their ways. I do know that Lady Turloflois would not suffer another red uh, on her mountainside. We will hunt the imposter here. If you find the imposter below, then slay it. You have already fought bravely. It is badly injured now. Agreed? Yes, yes. that sounds yeah. very agreeable. Absolutely. Yeah, I gotta, I kind of gotta do this for Bahama. He kind of told me to see this through, and I've been putting it off for a while. So here we are. Now the Azers gift you a bag. Here, chickens uh, for the Drakes. Oh, they're just stuck in. Are there just live chickens in there? Yeah, there's about a dozen live chickens in this in this sack. There's gotta be one unruly sack. <laughs> he like he like closes it before one tries to get. Out. I was like, whoa, okay, all right. Yeah, and wings are just trying to get out quickly. Get down, get down in there. Use it. One jumps out and lands in the lava. <laughs> Eleven chickens. around with its uh, wings on on fire. Oh god. Uh, Chaos ensues. All right, yeah. So how do we get in? You don't know. Uh, no? The cave well, in the center. You've never been here before. It, it, well, no, it's more like we can't walk through without dying. We're, yeah. We don't seem impervious to the elements yeah. as you do, despite tanking yeah. a couple dragon's breath. Most of the other lords and ladies have dragon elves. Where are yours? Uh, They did not want to come near. I think mm -hmm. they were afraid of that imposter you were uh, firing at earlier. Perhaps. Well, I have no way of helping you. We must hunt the dragon. All right. Do you have anything else to ask us? Mm. 
no, nah, you guys seem pretty cool. I can't think of anything. Yeah, no. Sounds like sounds like we got all covered. I think we're all witness right. us, and we will dance into the fire and find the imposter. May you dance yeah, yeah. well, friends. And so you do find yourself on the uh, edge of a giant lava flow, and you see an island um, there in the center of the volcano with a cave heading downward and some, like, a small rocky outcropping. All right. So I got a couple things I can do to help us all out here. All right. One, everyone looking pretty hurt. I assume I'm feeling pretty hurt as well. So yeah, got a bit of scrape. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cast Aura Vitality and start healing everyone. Uh, I will... I'm pretty beat up. I'll take... What is it? <clears throat> it's 2d6, a round. It's 10 rounds, so 20d6. I'll take 66 and see where I'm at uh, health-wise. Uh, I'll give Pacrawl... I'll give him 66 as well. Don't so give this... me that much. Don't give me that much. All right, I'll give you 46. I'll take that. Okay, so I'm giving... So this is my healing so far. Okay, it's kind of abysmal a little bit. Oh, wait, no, I was looking at your roll. That mine's pretty good. Uh, Lunar, I know I slapped some life into you, but are you still feeling pretty bad? Do you need any? Do you need any help? You're muted, bud. Oh yeah, I'll take whatever you have. Okay, all right. Then I'm going to go ahead and give him sixty-six of uh, points, and there's forty-six, which I will claim. I'll take it. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. So that is another 15 to me. Very, very good. All right. Now that we're looking all pretty healthy, I have a spell from way, way back that I learned to go walk across some water. And it, it works on lava. Surprisingly enough, we'll still get pretty burned, though. Uh, but it's I, it seems like our our at most our only ap option right now. Um, I do have to ritually cast it, which would take like a minute. How far across is it to the island? You find that the closest um, area to pass uh, pass over the lava um, is about fifteen feet. So across from the bottom right side. Yeah, we got. I feel like we could jump 15 feet. Could we? I, <laughs> Not me. I, well, I, I can I teleport. I a score of eight. <laughs> I can teleport 30 feet. Ah, that's where I uh, run into some trouble. I can't teleport. And, I Reynold, can, will your here, spell... if we can. I'm sorry, go ahead. P P crawl. No, 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 you go ahead. Go ahead. Reynold, will your spell affect everybody or just yourself? It's up to 10 people, so. Okay. And P crawl, do you have another way to cross? Um, yeah, I was just like, well, okay. I've got, I've got the, uh, this cape, right? And I can teleport and I'll take, I take one of you with me. Oh, can't, wonderful. Can't Let's take, do that. I can't take more than one though, unfortunately. It's just me, it's just a plus one, I'm afraid. How far could you teleport? Oh, it's oh, pretty, 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 pretty far. far. I can get you all the way to the other side over here. It seems like a shame to use it on 15 feet. But also, I have so to where burn. are we? I'm confused. Where are we seeing 15 feet at? Because I'm I'm thinking, aren't we supposed to be getting? Okay. Oh, but I I'm thought sorry. no. You're to you're totally right. I was um. This is I was this facing... is lava, right? No, no, you're right. We're talking 40 feet from the uh the right embankment. Ooh. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ooh. guys. That's okay. Yeah. Or, now this, or this embankment, this... there's 40 feet. Uh, 40 feet from uh from here as well. So. 
you're fairly close to that crossing point. Oh my goodness, yeah. that makes it a bit more dangerous. So I guess Lunar, if you could, uh, you said you could teleport, right? I can teleport. Yes. Could you maybe run like ten, jump ten <laughs> feet, and then just hail Mary it across the rest of the way? And I've never done that before. Well, I mean, it'll take me just like a minute and some change to just cast a spell. So uh, it seems like the best option then is for the water walk spell and then um, getting as close as possible and then maybe even teleporting from there if you have a shorter teleporting range. Is that fair to say? Yeah. All right. I'm going to start casting it. It's a ritual, so I don't lose any spell slots. Sure. Yeah, only only take a minute. It's fun. So you cast uh, Water Walk on the group of you, and where the lava is molten and there are rocks within it, you know, as it cools upon the surface and kind of uh, folds over itself, revealing new lava, that's the darker red um, that's also forming the lava rivers. You're able to go across those uh, without experiencing... Uh, you know, any pain from the heat or anything like that. But when you get closer to where the lava is burning and emitting flames, some of these flames are leaping, you know, 10 feet into the air. And so, um, you know, you will need to consider how you're going to pass these next, uh, you know, 15 feet or so over the hot flames. Can anybody jump more than 15 feet? That's what I'm trying to figure out. It's your strength score. Not great. 14. Ah, so close. <laughs> and so you'll just need to do the best you can, and if not, maybe try braving, you know, darting through the flames. Uh, I think I could... I... Now, this is from a jump calculator online that I've used before, which I'm sure most people use. Um with a running start, my long jump is 14 feet horizontally. Now, I know I understand I won't get the whole way there, okay. and I'm willing to take Go some some and... fire damage. Yeah, yeah. Make your leap, and then also make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Oh, that's actually my best. 18. Okay. And you land uh, very close to the island and avoid getting seared by the fire um, as you just kind of grit your teeth and take the pain but it passes quickly oh oh that's very warm all right then, lunar how do you cross the last stretch uh, i'm gonna follow in uh reynolds uh, footsteps okay so you said that was a what kind of check to jump over um you can make an athletics check for your jump okay um Bodie, what rules are you, are you using for your long jump calculation? Uh, I'll I'll go ahead and uh, post a, a link to it if you want to see. I've used this as Silverado before. Yeah. And and in prior campaigns and such, and it says it uses the official rules from the from the book. It has things for your sure. height. Okay. Certain abilities you might have. It's just been a while since we busted it out. Lunar, you jump, um, and you clear the lava river. Um, landing on the other side so maybe one of your best long jumps to date <laughs> and p crawl how do you uh cross the last fiery stretch p crawl is going to walk up to the edge of that big fiery inferno he's going to see the other two guys run and leap across and both of them just barely catching the edge he's gonna be like okay you know right he's gonna kind of shake it off a little bit he's gonna back up He's going to go to make a run for it. He's going to get right to the edge, and there's going to be a a fire right in front of him. It's going to scare the crap out of him, and he's going to misty step over instead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Reno doesn't see you for a second. Like, oh, oh no. He's been burnt by the lava. He's dead. And then he just poof, right next to you. Oh, whoa. What's that? Whoa. Oh. Who's I dead? I can't bring you back from lava, please. Oh, no, 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 it's all right. Oh, it's fine. I just went to the other dimension for a bit. Just pop right in. Okay, all right. Good job, team. We did it. We crossed a deathly cavern. That that's, doesn't make sense whatsoever. I'm. Don't worry, it's fine. Does um, anybody have knowledge of history? 
No. Uh, nope. No. Bunch of dumb. Bunch of dumb people. Okay. No smarts. No lore dump. <laughs> oh. Okay. It was for myself. See now you miss. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now you miss uh, my character. I do indeed. Mordecai, yep. Well read. Well studied. <laughs> hey, um, uh, quick question. Anyone want a death ward on them? So you don't die uh, in- immediately. Why don't you uh, death ward yourself, since you're the one that can bring us back if we uh, kind of, do fall? Kind of important that you stay up. Ah, I guess that's true. Like I got, I got a little bit of the heels, but not not like you got though. So that. All right. Okay. Yeah, keep you, keep yourself protected. So the cave is before you, and that is where we're headed. So as you proceed, um, as you enter the network of caves here, you hear a dull uh, reverberation. The uh, walls are red and black here, uh, rough and porous lava rock. And you hear the low vibration like the thrum of a train engine moving slowly through a town at night or like distant thunder. And this path leads downward toward the faint, distant glow of molten rock. The pores in the rock tunnel as you travel become larger. A person could fit their arm or leg into one with no problem. The pores pock the floor. Um, it, is anybody focused on a spell or a magical effect right now with concentration? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I could, should we maybe do a pass without a trace? through here are we trying to sneak we're not trying to sneak no i don't think sneaking would do much uh i'm not concentrating on anything currently okay i'm not either okay you simply need to keep focus on the path here as you're moving forward so that you don't fall into one of these large holes or pores the tunnel opens here to a wide uh, low chamber after you've traveled for uh, 40 50 feet not long um and this is a low chamber with dozens of columns Mm -hmm. where stalactites and stalagmites have met they're vibrant in color and they seem to be made up of several different types of minerals layered in stripes you see a trail uh, as you're coming out of this tunnel the tunnel is about 10 feet wide as it opens into the larger uh the larger chamber here and you see this trail of burnt wood chips that lead off to the left to a thick bed like a carpet of burnt wood chips and charcoal within the chamber and as you do enter this chamber you hear the chittering of dragon creatures dragon elves or drakes no doubt okay Uh, um Reynold takes out the chicken bag. I'm ready. You can act with the chicken bag if you like. Okay, I'm going to take a single chicken out, and I'm just going to toss it in front and see what happens to the chicken and see how quickly it, it meets its demise. Okay. I'll kind of give it a little shoe to sort of get it to go. Go. And Move. did you all see the new map? Uh, yes. Okay. And Joel, if you could pull Mordecai out, or the token Mordecai, uh, Lunar, to join them, please. And so as long as you're the one who drags your token out, you should be able to manipulate it. This is how Roll20 works. To my understanding. So usually if, like, for some reason you can't manipulate your token, like, you guys might need to bring your tokens out as well. Um, since I dragged yours onto the game board. Nope, I can Uh, move mine. Yeah, no, I've got access to mine. Okay, well, scratch that. That was the issue. It it seemed like that was the case the other night. Sorry, I did it for you. And so you release the bag of chickens, and they uh, scurry out frantically um, into the dark cavern, and uh, they disappear quickly. You hear them clucking, and then you hear the lap... (laughs) and uh, the vicious slavering of, uh, no doubt, long-fanged jaws. All right, we should probably go while they're distracted. Stop the chicken. 
<clears throat> Let's go. Sorry, who was that? Oh, we should probably go while they're distracted. Jules? <laughs> <laughs> Jules, you're in here? <laughs> and so are the group of you basically going to sprint for it? Yes. Sprint yeah. healthfully. Okay. And um, you can see it as the stalactites and stalagmites form columns, there's kind of a general path that leads uh, straight ahead. And then there's a body of water to the right. And it looks like this path kind of goes along the shore of that. So um, it seems like the path is essentially going straight up the map in this situation. Um, you know, perhaps the, the rocks there are much smaller as they've been tread upon uh, many times. And as you dart forward, um, You hear the uh, you know flurry of chickens and uh, draconic creatures um, to either side of you. Some of them have stopped upon the shore of the water, and suddenly you see uh, red drakes leap out of the water and pounce upon the chickens, uh, hungrily devouring them. And if you would, please, uh, roll initiative, because when some of these drakes pounce out of the water, there is no chicken for them to pounce upon. And instead, they look about hungrily, and they notice the group of you. That was almost a 20. It's a 12 for me. 5 for me. 7 for me. Guys, you don't have to roll this high. I know, I know. Making me look bad. Mr. Minus one on every roll I've seen <laughs> so far. Uh, only on the things that count. Okay, and you should all have uh, limited vision here as the columns are obscuring what you can see. But you see um, these drakes, red drakes, um, emerging to take their prey. And there are, seem to be four of them that don't have anything to eat. Um, Um, I want to give you guys advantage on initiative, actually, because of your chicken exploits. So if you guys can roll again, take the hired. Say less. I got uh, a natural 20. I got nat 1 on that one, so. <laughs> Ooh, it's worse. I'm the only one who improved. <laughs> How is it worse? It's still a 5. Right now it's like, why did that guy have a bag of chickens on him? And just, Reynold, just uh, <laughs> uh, you can act first. And you see that, that uh, some of these uh, drakes are looking at you hungrily. They're going to attack. They're already moving towards you. Okay. Uh, the ones pictured on the map, correct? Yes. The other ones are distracted by the chickens, and they won't be a factor. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I'm going to go uh, move up behind my friends, and then I'm going to use my crown and use a charge from it as a bonus action to cast command on this Drake okay. right here to go ahead. And I'm going to say, eat him. And I'm going to point to the other one that is close by. If you're so hungry. <laughs> okay. And then uh, as part of my action, I will go ahead and I'll cast... Yeah, I'll cast uh, I'll cast a spirit guardians. So if they get close, they have to uh, make a save or take some damage. I'll okay. do it at a third level. Okay. Will that be all for me? That would be all for me. Okay. And the drake that you the drake that you've commanded turns quickly, snapping its head, and it pounces upon uh, its brethren here, biting. Uh, 23 is going to hit. And it will deal 8 damage. Um, 
It'll make its full attack here. Is it's trying to not only bite but eat this creature, so we'll need to defeat it first. And then uh, from the left of you, where there's the bed of cinders and just you know burnt wood that lies, kind of like hay wood in a stable, but no doubt no doubt for the comfort of these creatures instead of uh, horses which would not be found here. They move their way through the columns, and suddenly you find two of these creatures upon you. All right. For those oh. two, they I'm need sorry. a cat. For those two, since they've moved into my area, they are. They need to make a wisdom save. Okay. The closest, and then the next. 17 DC. and 3. DC 18. I don't know why okay. the, I don't know why Spirit Guardians is one lower than my actual. Uh, so they both take uh, 3D 8 uh, radiant damage. So they each take 21. <laughs> that's a good roll. Wow. They howl and shriek in agony as they approach. The one that's closest here to Lunar almost second guesses its attack. You can see it kind of wavering in fear, but then it strikes out biting. And 11 will not hit. And then it whips its tail around as well. And then 8 will not do the trick. Um, the two creatures are here. One of them standing behind the column waiting for you to come into range. Uh, the other here snapping hungrily at you. And next is Crawl. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um... P crawl is going to teleport his 10 feet to here. Take an attack at this guy right, right in right front of me. Them on the other side. What's that? Oh, just like yep. right between the two drakes there. Yep. For now. Very good. He's going to take the attack at that one. That's a 21. Hits. Great. That's going to be... Uh, oh, ignore the force damage. I forgot to turn that off. Uh, 11 slashing damage on that one. Okay. Then I'm going to teleport again to the other side to attack this one at the bottom here. Okay. Right above me. Uh, nope. Nope. Wrong thing. There it is. Hello. That's a crit. Nice. <laughs> um, okay, so for that one, because I think I can do this when I hit it. Yeah, I'm going to use my favorite foe on this. So now that when I hit it, um, I mark it as my favorite enemy for one minute. Um, and I get... Uh, an extra D8 of damage on him. Okay, very good. So, so I'll add that onto that with the crit. <clears throat> so that'll be 12 plus 11, so 22 points of slashing damage. Very good. If I did that math right. Both creatures are badly injured and bloodied. Okay. And I have, because that is my... Um, um, because I attack two different creatures, that means that I get a third attack Very good. on the round. Um, and I am going to... Um, I'm going to stay where I'm at. I'm going to attack the same the same one again, since I have him marked with my favorite foe. Okay. Thing. So This time, it's a dirty 20. That'll hit. For 17 total. And you chop down the creature. It is slain before you. Will that be all from P-Crawl? Um, yeah. No, actually, I'm going to do one last thing. I, have, um, I now have uh, this thing here where I can use my bonus action to hide. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to drop around to the other side of this pillar and 
bonus action hide. Wow, it takes you till 14th level as a rogue to, or as a ranger to turn into a rogue. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a dirty 20 for my stealth check. Very good. And as you hide here, you see the other creatures, um, you know, some of them fighting still over some of the chicken remains. And they'll be done with their chickens soon, no doubt. So you'll need to uh, exit quickly while they're still preoccupied. After P. Crawl, uh, Lunar, you're up. The one uh, Drake is next to you. It seems to have been disheartened as its uh, brethren was slain, and it has taken a mighty blow as well. Uh, it looks like it's ready to retreat. You're up next. I'm sorry, you're muted, Joel. Seeing that it's weekend, I want to close the distance. One second, okay. please. To try to get within melee. I have you right here next to it, adjacent. Okay. Uh, and I've been doing this wrong. <laughs> Sorry, new character. That's okay. Uh, when I attack with melee, I have uh, improved Divine Smite. So I get an extra D8 on every melee attack. Very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, a normal attack uh, with the staff uh, against that one. Okay. Four. 26. Hits. Woohoo. Finally. Okay. So that's uh, 13 damage. Is it still up? It is still alive here. It shrieks in pain. In that case, I'm going to give it... Uh, so I have a uh, second attack. Sorry, I used the wrong thing. That's okay. Staff of power. So that's a 19. Hits. Okay. So that'll be 17. And the Drake is uh, smote, slain. I know, I know we're level 14 and all, and it makes sense, but this, I truly seeing your guys' numbers of, of how, how well you've built these murderers. Because <laughs> I'll, I'm looking at my attack bonus for my Warhammer is a plus eight. And it's magical. I, I'm, I'm out here barely hitting anything. You guys are just guaranteeing a hit every turn. And uh, actually, I still have movement, right? Yeah. Yes. yes so, yes. so I want to get uh, within melee of the closest one to me. Okay. The top one is being attacked by the other one I've commanded. Oh, sweet. So in that case, I'm gonna attack the same one. Okay. Very good. Uh, and I'm gonna use my bonus action with Polar Master to attack with the butt end of my staff. Okay. Well, a 22 hit. Hits. <laughs> All right. I like, I like your, I like your, uh, your weapon name there. But very, end. very good. Uh, for 14 damage. Okay. And that'll be the end of my turn. And Reynold, you're up. Okay, so for my command, as part of my um, crown, it says uh, the wording officially, as from what you gave me, command as a bonus action on you know wormling dragons, so like small dragons and stuff. And do I have to re up that command, or will that guy just keep doing his course of action as of right now? Um, as of right now, he's still under the effect of this. Okay. I'm going to command the other dragon that is currently being beaten on by two things to say, I'm going to say, lay down. I'm going to make it go prone. So the attacks have advantage. Okay. That's brutal. Will that be all? So that's my bonus action. I'm going to uh, move on up and start wailing on it with my hammer. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to take a couple of attacks. So 
So we're going to do a 22 to hit. Hits. And a 24 to hit. Hits. Okay, so that'll be... Oh, they, they're at advantage, but it like 32 damage. You decimate this creature, smashing it. I tender. I look over to the one that's that was helping us out. Like I tenderized it for you. Now get to eating. Okay. All right, per crawl wherever the hell you are. Let's get out of here. And the Drake dives into the water, and the group of you are free to pass uh, hurriedly as the other Drakes are preoccupied devouring the chicken bait that you've laid out for them. Or I guess it would actually be uh, dragon bait. Um. And uh, you find on the other side of this water uh, uh, another tunnel exiting this chamber. It seems to be the only way out as you look about, uh, perhaps momentarily, um, in your hurry. And um, as you um, go... um, down the path of the exit, uh, down the tunnel here. It leads deeper into the volcano. And after you travel about, um, you know, uh, 30 to 40 feet of a winding path here, and you're well out of the, uh, you know, the vicinity of the previous chamber, you see that uh, there is a worked path suddenly that emerges, um, you know, among the uh, lava rock. And you see... Um, here there is a door frame of, of a sort created here as on either side of the tunnel there are uh, worked pillars carved to emulate fire reaching to the ceiling of the chamber. Between these pillars is a wall of flames. Uh, it seems very thin and written above. Uh, so you're looking at essentially the tunnel you're heading down. There's uh, columns on either side uh, carved to emulate flame, and then a wall of flame as well. And written above in Dwarven is Dance into the Fire. Nice. Um, Reynold is going to do something he's never done the entire campaign. And he's going to make a history check on stone to try and see when it was carved or how old it is. Because he's curious. Because he's seen these weird, fiery Dwarvish people He doesn't know what the hell is going on with them. He wants to learn a little bit more. Sure. And uh, as part of being a dwarf, like I said, for the first time, this entire campaign, I'll make a history check. I'm considered proficient, and I add double my proficiency bonus. So this will be a... I'm just going to roll a d20 and add 10 to this. Here's your lore dump, Ben. You are are welcome. That'll be a... uh, 29 very nice these were carved within your lifetime no doubt um within you know the last couple of decades probably uh fairly recent carving and they appear enchanted and you can deduce that somebody passing through without um you know dismissing the enchantment will uh, be burnt Mm, interesting all right uh, I tell the guys, I was like, we, we either dance or we get burnt if we don't dance. Now, I can I can probably dispel it if we really want to, but I feel like I should just save that and we just do a little cha-cha. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. <clears throat> More of a Pretty good at fella, but yeah, it's fun. Or did you think when you joined up with us, you're going to have to dance through a fire tunnel to not get burned? Yes. Is this what you thought? Oh, you did? Oh, good That's foresight. why I signed up. <laughs> and if you all would as you intend to dance through will you make uh, performance checks please okay I'm going to give myself guidance just real quick before we before I do this that's not bad 17 uh, that d4 hey uh, 15 I'll take a 15 Wow. And the group of you, as you approach this flame and the columns, uh, recall the Azers and their dance and how they dance to emulate the dragon. And it, in some way, uh, perhaps just remembering this kind of helps to overtake your own rhythm 
and your own pacing and footwork and you dance through the fire and you're not harmed at all Rando literally had to tap some divine energy to not get hurt by dancing poorly <laughs> the gods helped him this day <laughs> now as you pass through there's a short passage here and it leads to a hall and uh, this is a larger hall opening and it seems like a hall that has some purpose it seems to curve as if the path is a ring around something the inner wall here is made of iron worked into the metal wall is a story and here deep duera is pictured a dwarven demi goddess who is a deep dwarf a dwergar she's shown leaning upon her battle axe and she ever sought conquest and expansion so in that way she bears a certain similarity to the girabolsh but in this story you see deep duera using her axe to sever many tentacles and it pictures the demi goddess standing in a still pool of water in another image a giant lies slain at her feet and in the third two creatures of fire and stone inlaid with brass kneel before her these pictures are engraved in the iron wall uh, in large scale like a mural upon the inner wall and um, as you traverse this hallway um, it, there does not seem to be another uh, exit here al although there is a wide hallway with um, you know some small chambers uh, attached to it hmm. uh if you guys would can i have everybody please make perception checks as you're just oh, looking at yeah. the wall here uh, where this story is depicted uh, i'll slap and give myself guidance not that it will be needed i got a 31 wow i got a 19 okay. i got an 11 and uh lunar you see separation in the art what looks like three large panels here and as you're kind of feeling this separation reynald you notice that and see an indentation like a handle of a sliding door and as you're noticing this uh perhaps indicating it or even going to reach for it uh the p crawl you notice there next to the handle a spring-loaded trap with recessed poison spikes that will drive into the hand of a person who tries to open the door using the indented handles uh, <clears throat> you have just enough time to warn Reynold. Yeah, I'll catch Reynold's wrist before he grabs at the handle. What? what? Well, and I'll kind of point. You see, you see that right there? Yeah, it's how they're gonna get you, right? Let me see if I can uh, do something like a, with this. Is that a needle? Yeah. Um, can is it possible for me to disarm this? Yes. Uh, harmlessly. Okay. Yes. Do I need to roll for that? Um, you can make a uh, a sleight of hand check with advantage. With advantage, okay. I'll slap you and give you guidance. Okay. And you pull your hand back quickly as the trap is sprung. It's simple and easy to evade. Okay. Huh? And uh, there you go. That should be able to get in there without uh without killing anybody now. All right. Leave alone anyway. <laughs> uh, does anyone want to scout forward, or we want to keep going at the pace we were before? Um, I feel like since we got to trapped door territory, we're getting a bit closer. Should we start sneaking? Mm. Can you afford the energy? We be a little uh... tapped afterwards. I mean, it might make some things a little tricky for me, but uh, I can make Definite, it. I can definitely just cut ahead if you want. Oh, then just do that. Yeah, you do it. I attract attention anyways. Yeah. And when they're hitting you, we'll use you for bait, and then we'll attack whatever's attacking you. It's a good plan, Lunar. Yeah, you go ahead. Sounds about right. Uh, I'm going to grab my shield. Strap it in front of me as I drive forward. I'm going to be behind him. I need to refresh my roll 20 real uh, briefly here. Let's see. 
a little note for the uh, people watching and uh, the players themselves. I forgot I had a broom of flying. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Which, you know, Ooh. hey, the water walk wasn't a bad idea. You know, I just didn't look hard enough on my character sheet. That would have been useful. Yeah, That's you know, funny. I literally could have sent it across and like ferried people and we wouldn't have had any risk of damage whatsoever. Yeah, well, we made it through. Yeah, we, we, we did it. We're good. We, were so, one, we lost one spell slot out of the whole thing. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Well, we too, because you did your water also. walk. It is also a broom and a volcano, so it very well could have just caught in fire from how yeah. hot it is. So now that you've disabled the trap, this panel slides. It must hang from a rail that obscure, that's obscured in the rocky crevice above uh, because uh, this is a large panel. As it slides away, it reveals a huge chamber like an arena beyond, but the floor is lava. There are steep rocky slopes, uh, too steep to ascend or descend, almost sheer like walls. Uh, and they lead down into the arena bowl. Within the center of the bowl is a large building made of gray stone. It stands solidly within the lava that surges and flows in the volcanic pit. Thick billowing steam rises off of the stone building, rising to an opening in the chamber where all the smoke from the volcanic pit raises. Um, as you look, you see that this stone building does not seem to have doors or windows. Hmm. So the way to get there is filled by lava and cliffs that we can't stand on. Yes, and I have moved you over to the map for this. Um, you should see the hallway that you stand within. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's okay. a, a chasm of lava and then this uh, massive building uh, of stone. Just a like a pure stone cube or block can we see the top of it does it go to the ceiling and it's just a what well, looks like just a wall to us instead of looking like a building uh the top of it is slightly higher than you but it does not go all the way up to the ceiling no so there is a roof that we can get onto yes okay um well Uh, I want to take out my, my newly acquired broom that I remembered I, I now possess, and I'm going to go ahead and get on it. Uh, does it seem like it's going to just ignite immediately? <laughs> uh, it hasn't yet, and there are not, um, you know, the flames are not leaping high enough at this point to catch your broom. Okay. Um... I'm going to go get on my broom, which has a fly speed of like 60, I believe. Flying speed feet of, of 50 feet. Uh, I'm going to get on it, and I'm going to fly up high enough to see the roof. Do I see any creatures or beings up there? Uh, no, the roof seems solid as well. Solid okay. stone. I'm going to go on over to the roof. I'm going to touch down gently on the side of it and get off my broom and see if the ceiling will collapse on me or not. Sure. You step off of the broom and you feel your feet drop where you expected there to be a ground and you're hanging, hanging uh, suddenly through the roof, the ceiling, your legs dangling through it as you hold your broom and you can see it is an illusion. All right. I'm going to try and get on the wall of it to see if there's a solid portion of the wall I can stand on. Okay. Um, as far as the wall, the wall seems to be an illusion as well. Okay. You I'm going to go through easily. I'm going to fly back to the others and I'm, I'm going to relay that like, it's just, it's all an illusion. It's just a big old box. It's fake. Um, I don't know what's in there, but uh, I could potentially bring each of us one each of us in there with the broom and then we can fight it out from there i believe i mean if if this crazy lady is trying to beat us to this place that seems like where the horde will be and it's probably going to be a big fight in there so i will give this broom over to Percrawl. i give the broom to Percrawl, and i say oh yeah so 
just like go in there, look around, see if there's any like immediate danger, and try to find a good spot for us to land. And uh, you can send it over, and I, I whisper the word, which is uh, I think I believe it was like giddy up or something like that that I, <laughs> from so long ago. And I say, oh, yeah. you just say giddy up to it, and you can like tell it to go somewhere, and you can bring people back and forth. And so you've realized that the what? walls of this place and the ceiling are an illusion. You've revealed it. Uh, Reynold, you believe this to be the location of Trilophilus' horde. Uh, and so let's take a brief break here. We can get some food, water, drinks, whatever we need to do. And we're going to be back in 12 minutes at uh, 745 Pacific. And then the adventure will continue. <laughs> Cleric's not really like customizable like that. It's just you have so many different options for a cleric that you can do just about anything. With all the invocations and everything with Warlock, you can kind of build it to be whatever you want it to be. We play an all cleric or an all warlock uh, campaign, and we all go yeah. in such widely different directions. Like, you have a hexblade tank. You have a, um, a divine um, or a celestial healer. And, and, uh, have... uh, and a fiend DPS, yeah. fiend DPS, and a and a and a uh, archfey support. Boom! There's your whole there's your whole party, and you all work for the same patron, and it just works beautifully. Yeah, <laughs> it's all a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> and there's the one session where you anger your patron so much that you all lose your powers, and you're just like normal people. Yeah, we're live. That's Welcome the session back. where you go buy a shop. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back, friends. Um, <clears throat> here the adventure will continue. And uh, when we left off, Reynold, you had just uh, investigated this strange building, um, and you found that the walls and ceiling were illusionary. And you gave P-Crawl your uh, room. Broom. So P-Crawl, the one who... Well, I will not say anymore. P-Crawl will scout ahead. Is that right? P. Crawl is flying, flying out to scout ahead. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. 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 Okay. I okay. thought you were still talking to Reynold. <laughs> sorry. Yes. I... P. Crawl is scouting ahead. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you plan to fly over the lava and then um, through the illusionary wall of this compound, whatever this is. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um. Um. Do... Actually. Mm. Hmm. No, never mind. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just going to do that. And what is your passive perception, P-Crawl? Uh, 23. Like a kajillion. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you fly across then. Um, and you find that you can um, land where uh, this wall is pictured. And beyond is a still pond. Let me uh, pull that up on my end here. And you easily move through the wall, and you see uh, this still uh, pond beyond it. And there are paths through the pond of uh, stones um, reaching out of the water. Um, you see that below you, the floor of the pool is covered in coins and gemstones. And there are ornate columns rising out of the pool with fine armaments or valuable gems displayed upon them and again you see you know this path of flat stones emerging from the pool and it, it's uh just a very tranquil still pool here does any of it look like the um the items that we're searching for um you'll probably need to take a closer account of things um, if so one of them would probably be displayed upon one of these columns no doubt and what's tricky is within here, uh, steam rises, obscuring your vision. So, um, you know, you, you can't always see uh, far across this chamber. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and hop off the broom and um, whisper its little, like a, 
I think he said, just just tell it the word and it just goes back. So uh, he just like holding the broom like this. He's like, oh, what was it? Uh, yeehaw? No, no. Uh, get along, little dog. No. Giddy up. Was that it? It starts floating. Ah, it is. Uh, go, go back to Reynold. That's your daddy, and and bring him back over here. Yeah. It just starts going towards the uh, towards us. <laughs> As it flies away to where I can't see anymore, I'm like, oh, bug! I hope it did that right. <laughs> it just sinks into the lava. Yeah. And then while it's gone, I'm gonna kind of try to move around this ledge a little bit, just just uh, peering out and uh, seeing if I can and see either of the um, the things. Sure, keeping an eye out for the scepter and. Yeah, and the yeah, load. just just trying to, in between the 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 steams and everything, looking to see if I can spot them before everybody else gets here. Sure, very good. Will you make a perception check for me, please, P. Crawl? Sure. Oh, did not mean to do that with advantage. Wow. I mean, it's a 31 and a 33, so either way. 31. Okay. And who will be riding the broom across next? Uh, I'll ride the broom. Okay. Reynold, as you hop atop your broom and uh, you're carried about halfway uh, across this chasm, um, that is when P. Crawl, you see uh, distant within the chamber uh, the form of a figure um, moving um, a shadowy figure in the mist and um, at the same time as this as well uh, the lava below you surges Reynold and oh. suddenly you see it is not only lava but the wings the head the torso of a red dragon the same one that you had encountered uh, earlier atop the volcano and this dragon has caught you unawares and it will make an attack against you. No! Well, the brim was nice while it lasted, guys. The first uh, uh, claw will be at advantage for a 34. To, ooh, a nice crit on that. The others will not be at advantage, so a 17 and a 25. Uh, 19 is my AC. Okay. Ow. Okay, going to take 21 slashing damage first from the claw. And then the bite comes. <clears throat> You'll take 27 damage. Okay, and resistance to fire, so... As the dragon bites you, roll a uh, constitution save for the broom, or it is snapped in half. You need to beat a 10. Okay. I believe I did so. Yes, you hang on to the broom. Uh, and I will pull the red dragon. Everybody, please roll initiative. I got six. Uh, there we go. Uh, 22. Yeah, woohoo. 13. So I didn't make the rest of the way. You're halfway across when the dragon leaps out of the lava as it's been waiting for you. Yeah, that's rough. That's that's really rough. It's rough. Okay. Yay. I set up water walk, so I won't like sink into the lava, at least. He crawl, you're at the top of initiative, and you see this uh, figure in the mist. It disappears again from sight, and you notice, of course, the huge red dragon snatching Reynold out of the air. You can act first. Oh, man. Okay. All right, um... I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna pull out my longbow. Okay. Um, and because I'm seeing seeing uh, uh, 
seeing Reynald come out and, um, you know, being attacked over the lava, I know he's in a really bad spot. So I'm going to come right up to the edge of the ledge there and just start uh, raining down with the long bow. So first is a 17. It's probably not going to hit. Miss. Next one is a, ooh, there you go. There's 23. Hits. All right, good deal. Um, when I hit him with that one, I'm going to go ahead and here, I put this on here now, so I actually have it on there. Um, do with the favored foe. Okay. So that's going to mark him with that. And then let me get my damage on here. Ooh, nice roll. Um, so 19 piercing total. Okay. And then I'm just going to, um, just sort of be like, Oi! Oi! You little lizard piece of shit! Oi! <laughs> just just trying to, to just get his attention off of Reynald, who's fluttering in his face. Okay. So just, just shouting obscenities at him in between launching arrows. Okay. We'll let the elf MP crawl. And, yeah, that's going to be my turn. I'm going to stand big and tall and and proud right out there in the open i want him I, I want him to see me and as the arrow strikes this dragon uh soundly it turns its attention to you indeed Crawl. its wings flapping it stays there uh right next to reynold but it breathes in its fiery breath and releases it as well in a cone of fire oh, and we make a, a like dexterity that. saving throw p crawl yep 19. And we'll have some damage to roll. Oh. We'll take 70 damage from the, the dragon's breath as it focuses on you solely. Okay. He, doesn't, he doesn't save? Uh, no. Okay, no worries. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to use my reaction to cast absorb elements on that attack. Okay. And so I'll and then, pull half of that off. Okay. And you have all um, overcome the fear of seeing this dragon already, so its frightful presence will not come into play. After the dragon is Lunar. I'm going to look at this red, ugly thing. <laughs> and uh, curse a couple of obscenities at, at it as I use my Hexblade's curse. Okay. So I might I might say a, a few mean things about its mother. <laughs> and uh, this allows me to uh, crit on a 19 or 20. Okay. And it and it also allows me to add a uh, a bonus to damage equal to my proficiency bonus, which is five. And then using my action, I'm going to cast three Eldritch Blasts right in its face. These are not at advantage. These are straight rolls because it's been over a minute since I used my divine... Uh, sorry, my channel divinity. Okay. Uh, hits. Uh, 22 hits 17 uh, misses on the 17 I'm going to reaction give him plus 10 okay. war god's blessing all three will oh. hit perfect nice. finally I, I can do it so these are all going to I'm going to add uh, 5 to whatever damage is so that's 11 Uh, 18. And 12. Oops, did not mean to do that. Um, each time this creature is pushed, right? Uh, not on this one. Okay, thank you. Is that all from Lunar? Uh, yes, that, that'll be the end of my turn. And the dragon um, 
<clears throat> looks either way contemplating what it should do here and it's it's it has a brutal idea and it tries to grapple Reynold with an opposed athletics check oh acrobatics check all right uh well we're doing athletics because that's the best chance i got um oh i'm sorry i also the first time you guys defeated the dragon i wanted to give everybody inspiration and i forgot i want to be giving more inspiration so everybody has one uh, use of inspiration at least right now okay. all right and the right. dragon has a 20 on its strength contest. Uh, okay, so I can't do that for... I can do that for me, but not for him. I'm going to go ahead and roll. Lord, have, have mercy. Uh, I'm going to use my 15. inspiration to roll again. That's a 19. Um, can I give myself guidance on this? Because <laughs> I would I would either meet or beat it if that's the case. Um, uh, we were ruling guidance as a reaction from now on. So can I've I then? A couple times on stream that we're doing that, so that's an option okay i will do guidance because i'm not concentrating on anything yet so now i need a uh i believe a two to at least not die here oh uh i'm hey. at 22 and the dragon tries to grasp you reynald uh, it struggles and struggles and has you for a moment as it dives into the lava clutching you in its talons and death is <clears throat> imminent but uh you are inspired and rest free at the last second as the dragon plunges i grab the uh talons around my my waist and i just with pure like my muscles bulge out and my my fingers <laughs> grow a little bit of dragon claws or my gauntlets and i just rip it free and i say no not the lava and that would be it and the dragon dives into the lava and is gone from sight. Does not emerge um, even after a moment or several minutes of waiting. Reynold, which side do you fly to? I fly to the other side. Okay, you continue. And I'll go send the broom out to go get uh, our friend, Lunar. Uh, it, you said we had time before it shows up again, so I'm going to cast the Aura of Vitality. Uh, I'm going to do it at uh, third level. And I'm just going to give myself 10, and I'm going to give uh, Pakral 10. Okay, before all of that time elapses, um, do you send the broom back to Lunar? Yes, yet? I, I do. I give, okay. I, I send it back to him. Lunar, do you make use of the the broom to fly fly across the lava? I do. Brave. Half of the time of your aura of vitality passes, so you can distribute that in any way you like. But then. Um, <clears throat> interrupting to some degree uh not breaking the spell by any means but you hear a voice <clears throat> within the still pool you're too late reynold i already wear the robes i wield the scepter i am the dragon watcher and you see a shadowy figure in the mist and you recognize the voice of lady murthash um a crawl you get 5d6 healing then that's, about, that's about half of what we could do. Uh, I'm going to yell back at her. Yeah, well, last I heard, you got to have a complete set. And let's be honest, you're not really cut for the job anyway. Oh! Who so voted you in office? I have two of the three. I is, have one of the three. Sounds like you're one less. You're one less of a monopoly there. 
Mirthash. You're gonna have to make a damn good deal. You have come for what I have already claimed. No, I I claimed it first. Mm. It is true. He did. No, he did. I got I got I got family rights to this. That's true too. Yeah. Hell, it's practically know, but... a hand me down at this point. It's basically you're you're basically stealing his own uh stuff. Yeah. Is all that is all this true? What you're saying? No, yeah, no, I've literally been told to like three different gods at this point to get this shit. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was chosen by the gods. <sighs> And as you proclaim this, uh, you see a large looming figure behind her. It stands towering as it emerges from the mist, um, nearly reaching the 30-foot high um, illusion of a ceiling that still persists um, somewhat translucent, uh, transparent, excuse me. And um, What is that? This is... My insurance plan. <laughs> wow, you're so weak. You have to hire outside muscle. Uh, yeah. Well, my muscle is a lot bigger than yours, as you can see. Now, enough jibber well, jabber. Give me the crown, and then I will let you go in peace. In fact, I will allow you each to take anything of your liking from here. Is Hell she, no. Is she... Is she wearing the, uh, does she have the scepter and the, um, and the, uh, what you call it? She is, and you see her wearing them, a long, flowing, uh, red robes and a scepter with a, a red jewel affixed to the end. Okay. Um, I want to be annoying to her. I'll, I I I want to try and like whisper to the guys to, to make it seem as if we're like during it. I'm just gonna whisper to them like, if we can stall for time, I can keep healing us. Give it like another thirty seconds or so. I'll allow uh, twelve more seconds to pass. Okay, so I'll Ooh. throw myself more. I throw myself two, and I'll throw per crawl two. Oh so, great! More some more healing going around. Okay, um... Now, you said you, you could take anything from the Horde, right? If we did... If we did accept... Yes. Yes. Then I... Okay, I want the robe and scepter. No, that's not what I meant. You know it. And she releases... Uh, she raises her arms throwing back the robes, revealing a heavy crossbow, and she releases the bolt. It flies through the air at you, Reynold. I bet you're not even going to hit. Initiative. She hit. She 100% hit. And take 10 damage. Ow. I just healed that. What's the range on a crossbow? Huge. Even if it was a disadvantage, she still would have hit right. me. <laughs> uh, we're going to make a con save for... Yeah, Either we're good. You're within the uh, short range of it as well. Oh. It is a heavy crossbow. So, I would believe that. Uh, oh, it was a heavy... Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a little tiny little hand one. She's got For the medieval equivalent of a 50 cal. For clarification, I'm already on the other side, or am I still traveling across? I have you on the other side as well. Uh, the All three of you have made it across okay. now. So that would be an initiative okay. for me too? Yes, please, everybody. Here, here, I'll take that broom back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. You somehow got lower that's, than I did, and I got a nat like, one. That's like the third time, man. I've That's the third time I've rolled one on initiative. <laughs> that's the first time I've seen a nat one be higher than a normal roll on initiative. Uh, what can I tell you? And as the bolt flies, the large creature strides forward. Oh, you're approaching us. 
and it stands barring the path uh, between uh, yourselves and Lady Murthash. And now, P. Crawl, it is your turn to act. <clears throat> okay, P. Crawl is going to use his cape of the mountebank to uh, use to cast Dimension Door, and um, and he's going to reappear right next to our friend. Okay. And I want to take the scepter from her. Are you taking anyone with you? Um, I was, well, I didn't say, I didn't say I was going to before, so I guess not. I probably um, should have. I don't think we've disarmed people much. Um, let's see. You can attempt to disarm them uh, as a melee attack. Okay. That's what I want to do. We usually just take it from them when they're dead. Yeah, I know, but breaking tradition. So do I just do like a like a, a strength attack? I guess. Yeah, you can. Um... So it's. Let's see. I'm sorry. Creature can use a weapon attack. Uh, attacker makes an attack roll contested by a strength, athletics, or acrobatics. So it's basically a grapple contest uh, for the weapon uh, to make them drop the weapon. Okay. And disadvantage if holding it with two or more hands. If the target is ho holding it with two or more hands, which... Uh, um, I'm not even really sure how she's no. holding it right now because she's got that crossbow. She Tucked just pulled under. the crossbow out. She no doubt dropped the crossbow and is wielding the scepter in one hand. Uh, so not in both. So there would be no uh, disadvantage. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to appear and just just snatch it. Like um, as I'm as I'm coming out of that that puff of smoke, already grabbing for it. Okay. Um. Ah, she rolls a six. So it's a strength. Thing, this is, I you, guess. you'll make a melee attack, like a strength based attack. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm just rolling strength. I have to add proficiency to this still, so that's uh, 13. You succeed, and the scepter falls out of her hands and into the water, uh, sinking to the bottom. The water appears to be about four feet deep. Okay. And you're you're uh, in the air right now. If you're on the other side of her, then you'll be on the path. Does that make sense? I do. Oh, want... okay. I see. I see. Okay. So, as a reminder, we all do still have water walking because it lasts like forever. Oh, okay. Yeah, water walk is a. It lasts for like a whole day, I think. No, a, a one hour. Okay, so I knocked it from her hands, and now it's sinking. Yes. But I can't go underwater. Wait, how does water walking work? Can you can I still... choose to go underwater. It's just it's a conscious thing of like either you want to be on it or swim. Okay. And and you said the water is only about four feet deep. That's right. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. Well, I slapped it out of her hands. I'm going to, and that just counts as one of my attacks. Yes. Okay. Then I'll slap it out of her hand, and then I might as well swing around with my scimitar too while I'm at it. Okay. Since I'm since I'm here, um, I don't know if that's gonna be enough. Fifteen. Uh, it bounces off of her plate armor. Okay. All right, I'm going to um, I'm going to bend down and snatch up that that's uh, staff. Okay, make a dexterity check could. for me, please. Sure. It would be easy if it had just fallen to the ground, but it's fallen to the water. Okay, yeah, you're able to snag it just by the uh, butt right. end of it. Great, and then I'm going to yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna. Um, just break away. I'm going to drop way back to here. <laughs> I got 45 feet and I have swim speed and everything. So any of like the difficult terrain and stuff from the water would be. She looks and the scepter is gone from her hand in an instant. 
Curse you. Yeah, guess you only got one now, huh? And will that be all from P. Crawl? Yeah, that's it for me. Okay. And she lifts the crossbow, aiming it at you. Of course she does. Grasping it in both hands. Uh, 14. Miss. And she begins moving quickly. Uh, approaching you, P. Crawl. And next is Reynold. Okay. You see this hulking figure uh, before you. It seems to be um, wreathed in flame and has, you know, pieces of metal like brass uh, just jutting out from beneath its armor. Can I make like a free insight check to see if she is the one that's commanding it or if, it, if she's the one giving power to it, i.e. if I kill her, this thing stops trying to kill us? You would need to um, use an action to do something like that, but um, All right. I think you'll... So if you want to do something like that, it would require um, an action. Okay. Uh, Reynold is going to just work under that assumption. Not going to spend the time to s confirm his uh, suspicions. Sure. He took the broom back from... Uh, lunar and is going to hop underneath it and with the 50 foot fly speed he is going to get up in the air uh 15 feet up from the well i, I want to be 15 feet above the head of whatever this fire monster is to try and get out of melee range of it at the very least okay so the em and i got call it an, an ember guard an ember guard so I want to I want to go up, fifteen feet above its head from where okay. I'm at currently. And you I got fifty feet through the illusion, the uh, illusionary uh, ceiling. Oh, whoa! All right, I'm gonna go back down real quick, <laughs> and I'm going to fire off a guiding bolt at okay. the good lady who we just stole from. Uh, it has a hundred twenty foot range, so I can definitely get it off. I'm just gonna do it at first level. Eighteen. 18 hits. Okay. That'd be 11 points of radiant damage, and the next attack has advantage on her. And then as a part of my bonus actions, to still have Aura Vitality, I'm going to regain uh, 2d6 hit points. And I believe we're at, like, it's been 30, 12 seconds, so that's, f like, 46, so I have about... Three rounds left of that healing. About Yeah, about three rounds. So, well, now, like, two. <laughs> but, you know, just keeping that up. Okay. And I'm going to get all the way up to the ceiling, and then I'm going to move, like, a bit to the left, I'd say, right there. And that's where Give I'm going to be. Distance, I see. Yeah. I look at Lunar, I was like, hey, uh, good luck fighting that thing. <laughs> he just kind of points towards the big flame guard. He's like, Hey, I can guarantee you this. As long as you don't fall in the lava, I can bring you back later. So don't fear death. And Luna, and with those words of wisdom, it is your turn. That'd be, that'd be it for me. Thank you. Muted. Uh, I'm going to use my movement to close the distance with the giant protector. Okay. So that'll get me 30 feet closer. So I want to move. Uh, I'm going to use Hex, which has a range of uh, 90 feet on Lady Murtash. Okay. And I'm going to pepper her with a little bit of uh, Eldritch Blast love, you know? I think everyone deserves a little bit. Even her. Even her. Especially her. So that's going to be uh, three Eldritch Blasts uh, with a D6 attached. Okay. Is is it Hex Blades Hex or Curse, or is it just actual Hex? Hex. Three hits. All right. So you, choose a, one... you choose an ability to have her yeah. have disadvantage at. 
I'm going to go ahead and say uh, strength. So any strength checks, she has disadvantage. Okay. So 10 plus 1d6. So that's 15. Another 10 plus 2, that's 12. And the last one is going to do 11 plus 2, so 13. So 15, okay. 12, and 13. And she's blasted by Eldritch energy uh, being badly knocked about. And then I'm going to turn and face the, the protector. <coughs> the Ember Guard grins. <clears throat> Excuse me. Will that be all from you? That'll be the end of my turn. The Ember Guard grins and light seems to come out of its uh, gaping maw and its eyes. And it... Uh, seem to have been inhaling deeply ready to lunge and uh, sprint towards you but instead as you approach it kind of smiles and a little uh, puff of smoke comes out of its uh, gleaming mouth and steps forward to you and uh, just uses its uh, as he sword. does I'm so sorry as he steps within my melee range he's going to activate a uh, reactionary attack from uh, Polar Master. Okay, please make your attack. So this is a plus 12 with Staff of Power. Uh, will a 19 hit? A 19 will hit. You will take 11 bludgeoning and 5 radiant. Okay. And it's his turn. And the creature snorts and takes its long broad sword and sweeps it, the brunt side of it just uh, barreling into you. And for an 18 to hit. That'll miss. And again, comes sweeping back for a 28. That will hit. And you're bludgeoned for 18 damage, and you'll also take fire damage as when the sword strikes you, it ignites in flame uh, magically. Seven fire damage. Okay. And uh, next is P. Crawl. All right. Crawl is going to <clears throat> Yeah, he's close enough, I think. Yeah. If you take these, Tola Flos will know it. She will never forgive you. She'll hunt you down and take that back. I'm gonna run up to about here and I'm going to bonus action uh Misty Step. I'm gonna appear behind her. Um, can I grab that cape and snatch it off of her? Or is it more uh, it like is a, a fixer. cloak style? Um, it would be quite difficult to disrobe her, if you will. Um, well, don't say it like that. You make me sound like a creep. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> my choice of words. <laughs> but, uh... Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I know this um, is D&D &D where you can do anything, but really there's got to be a line, Chris. Yes, there's, a, on, there's a line. No, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh, if you were to try to remove it, it would uh, be in danger of the fabric ripping terribly. Got it, got it. Okay, I didn't know if there was like a chain or something I could maybe... Okay. All right, Um, that's fine then. I will just uh, pop up behind her 
and um, ah heck, might as well just beat the hell out of her, I guess. I'll hit her. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Great. I just want to say, I just want to say, we do not condone this behavior, uh, disrobing and then beating. Chris will be so off. It the, was not. Uh, there was. It was. Chris it was will be or, off the, the game was the next, or, the, next week. He will. He won't be I returning didn't do back. Both. I didn't do both. It, you tried to do both. You and did one not of my... them. Never mind. <laughs> Y'all are gonna get me in trouble. Nice okay, stuff. I'm gonna. I'm gonna um... lose our sponsors, man. Come on. Rain it in. Rain it in, boys. I'm gonna mark her fa as my for my favorite foe with that strike, and uh, yeah. So let me roll that damage. Oof, good hit. So that's uh, 15, 17, 21 points of slashing damage. And as you tug at her robe, spinning her around to face you. You strike her down, and she falls to your blade, defeated, unconscious. All right. Um, then I'll use the remainder of my turn uh, getting the the cape off of her, or the robe. Or okay, that's fine. Whatever it is, and only that. No, you're not gonna you're not gonna loot a little bit further. You're not, not gonna search those no. pockets and see what's Actually, in there. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put two extra gold pieces in her pouch. That's what I'm gonna. Oh do. no, you're trying to what buy us gentleman? off. You're trying to buy us <laughs> off now. After P crawl is Reynold, if you would. Oh man, I don't know what P crawl's doing over there. It's a little weird. It's getting weird. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To make it that's weird. <laughs> so he's uh, putting money in her pocket. Reynold, he just killed her. You, what the? You would, what's going you know? on? <laughs> Emperor Guard here is hulking above your friend. That's a little strange. Um, I'm going to bonus action heal uh, 2d6. Uh, wow, that's a whole whopping wow. two points. All right, and then I'm going to cast a uh, hold monster at fifth level on it. Uh, I need a wisdom save. From this creature now or it's paralyzed in case it has immunity so dc 18 now i can't imagine a robot thing being super wise 15 all right he is paralyzed for a minute you don't say <laughs> just as it's reaching up its massive broadsword it's 30 feet long at least it freezes in place above Lunar's head. All right. I'm going to move in. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move in like right next to its head on my broom. And I'm going to say to uh, Lunar, like, sorry, I know it, I know you took a little bit of a beating there, but it, see, it works out in the end. And that'll be my turn. Okay. Then Lunar, you're next. So... When you have a stick, every problem. What, what's the saying? How, how does that saying go? You have a hammer. I, <laughs> you have a. When you have a hammer, I, I don't have a hammer. Like I have a, a stick. <laughs> okay. When you when you have a stick, every problem looks like someone's head, right? <gasps> oh my <laughs> lord. Okay. It's a different. Any one. Uh, for paralyzed? Because I is, know this is permanent. Any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within five feet, and it has. Was advantage so i have triple advantage against them yeah I, sure i have i have three attacks lined up and if, all... if just one of them makes a roll it's a crit so let's see how this rolls out uh first attack with triple advantage and the last roll is that is under the paralyzed be... rules Bodie? yes it is yeah any attack rolls against a creature have advantage. Any attack that hits a creature is a critical hit if you're within five feet. Wow. So that so that is a twenty six. That's a that's a hit and a crit. Awesome. So second attack with advantage with triple advantage is going to be uh, 
19 or a 19 will hit okay 23 and the last one is going to be with the butt end ah, okay so two hits two crits and sorry uh i would I, uh i got one more roll for the last one oh please do I'm yeah, gonna so, I'm so gonna reaction give him a uh, plus ten to his, so he gets his third hit in. So that's a twenty-eight for the last hit. So these How many are times daily. Oh. Do you have that now, Bodhi? Uh, it's just my channel of Andy, which is twice. So I don't have any more. I don't ever use it though because everyone's so far away. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be uh three hits, three okay. crits. So uh, two, for two the of them are gonna hit. Two. What? I gave him plus 10 on the oh, last I'm one. Sorry, I blanked. Yeah, no, you're right. Okay. <sighs> I just said. So oh, that's going to be uh, three attacks, uh, all crit. So that's going to be plus. Uh, I'm going to smite on all of these two. Oh, yeah, you can do that. So I'm gonna roll the the normal damage first, and then I'll roll crit damage, and then I'll this roll is crazy damage. Okay, yeah, <laughs> Let's see it. When it's like they've got this new guy, he just showed up and wants to help. So I mean, we'll let him. And he's just destroying this one guy. So that's the base damage. Okay. Uh, on top of that, it's gonna be uh, another three d eight uh radiant from improved divine smite. Uh, from the crits. Another uh, 3d6 from your 3D6 normal. 3d6 from my normal. And then another four, uh, three attacks at 2d8, so 12d8 uh, for Divine Smite. Okay. It's a lot. Okay. Don't worry, I'm totaling up this damage right now. I've, uh, I've taken the damage all off. I, I want to see how much he's doing though, because this is. <laughs> <laughs> <And> then... <laughs> okay. Is that all from Lunar? Uh, that'll be the end of my turn. Yes. He did 132 yeah. damage that turn. <laughs> and the Ember Guard shakes off the paralysis. Um, no, it's a. Seems to one minute be a temporary effect uh in this respect uh oh, for whatever right. reason that is it affects this monster differently than it would others that you've been saying no past. to this it's the, the reverse of what you're thinking actually kind of it's um, okay ben I, I know you're upset at me i i know i get it it's fine it's I'm fine take, ben I'm gonna and no it, it's okay right now <laughs> it's fine i have death for it i'm okay <laughs> He actually has super <laughs> ultimate advantage. It's a new. Oh, oh. Yeah, he also has elf, like, triple elvish, advantage on everything. Yeah. Whatever the hell Joel has. He also rolled three times for an attack, like diamond yeah. cheaters. Oh, Andy, Andy, look at that. He's got the luck feet, too. Huh. <laughs> Crazy. That's weird. Actually, he has this ability where whatever I roll, I can say it's a different number. So they're all yeah. going to be 20s. <laughs> Auto crits on all attacks. Wow. Look at that. That's weird i don't know if it's not what the stat block says i don't know guys that's what's in the books you know as you begin <laughs> i don't make it as the uh, amber guard begins its turn uh flame erupts around it uh as kind of like a barrier and if you're um, adjacent to it then you'll take nine fire damage <laughs> um oof. and uh then the creature again um as it had raised its sword it continues with its swing um, but sees Reynold and opts for uh, this other target uh, for the for at least this first attack. Oh, oh the thirteen, the nat one, and it swings again at Reynold furiously at twenty-two. Oh, he did hit on that one. I should have, you know, 
No, you know what? I'm not taking back what I said. I'm proud. I'm proud of, of what I said to Ben. <laughs> uh, and you'll take 14 bludgeoning damage, and then the sword erupts in flame again as it strikes you for 12 damage. Oh, but, but calm down. I, have, I, have, I hold on. I got. I got to catch up here a little bit. Jeez. <laughs> Okay, so nine fire damage. I have resistance. It's half to like five or whatever the hell, and I got a four. So, and then fourteen four. bludgeoning, and then uh, an additional twelve fire or six. Okay, then fourteen bludgeoning. So that's okay. Uh, uh, my keyboard's turning off. Okay, so what's after the bludgeoning? Well, how much? Is this a real line of inquiry? Um, twelve. 12 fire damage, my friend. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like, legitimately discombobulated because I have to, like, do subtraction on the spot, and I am... Uh-oh. Throw yeah, the mouth at you. <clears throat> okay. Okay, After all right. the Amber Guard strikes, oh. <laughs> uh, it, it is P-Crawl's turn, and this creature you found seems our to be willing weakness. to fight until defeat. You found our true weakness, basic math. So, P-Crawl, you're up. All right. Um, Crawl's going to go ahead and 5, 10, 15, 25, 30, 40. Perfect. Um, he's going to rush up on this guy and start swinging from behind here. That first attack is a 21. Hits. Okay. For 19 damage total. Oh, wait. No, not 19. Just the 14. Okay. I forgot to take my favorite foe thing off. That was on the other one. Okay. Uh, then he's going to come around the side and use his... Uh... Yeah, we'll just do it for there. Use his second attack. Getting a 18. Uh, we'll miss. Okay. It clangs off of his armor. All right. And then um, I'm just going to go ahead and back up a little bit. And that's going to be uh, yeah, it's going to be it for my turn. Okay. After P-Crawl is Reynold. Oh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. I am uh just gonna like peek over around his back at Reynold and just be like, Reynold, I got him. I got the things. Sweet. Uh, we might have to still kill this thing, but yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. That's, that's good, good to know. know. Good to know. Thank you. Reynold, go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, I am going to. I'm going to move away from him. Uh, I'll take the opportunity attack. Uh, I move about 30 feet away and up. Uh, 17. Misses. So I'm I'm going to basically like hug this in illusory ceiling and uh, stay up there for what's going to be the remainder of this fight and i'm going to go ahead and cast uh guiding bolt at it and nobody has walk on water anymore obviously it uh, hold monster uh walk on water is not a concentration spell oh thanks my bad which makes it a little bit nicer to actually take i completely forgot uh, that no yeah it's very useful uh, uh, and, okay sweet just the first level Nothing too fancy. 16 radiant damage, and then whoever hits it next has, whoever it attacks it next has advantage. Okay. After Reynold is Lunar. I mean, you just set it up for me so perfectly. Of course. Turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how could I turn it down? Uh, I'm going to get into like a perfect batter's pose and just smack this thing. Uh, 
find one more just in case. So that'll be a 24. Hits. So first attack. Does uh, 14 damage. Okay. Creature is still standing. Badly injured here. Second attack is going to be normal. Hello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice crit. That's how it awesome. crit. It is. Hey, you know what comes next. <laughs> Fireball. Uh no, not quite, but close. So uh I'll do the base damage first. Uh, I'm also going to add a third level smite. And I'm going to use one of the points on the Staff of Power to add another D6 to it, too. So that's 10 plus 8, 18. And then uh, 2D6 from Staff of Power. And 8D8 from you Divine Smite. The Staff of Power like a bat. Oh, wow. <laughs> and as it had leaned in to swing at you its head was exposed and it puts it in perfect alignment for your swing and it just thwaps the head of this creature right off it goes splashing into the pond and the body collapses defeated makes a really satisfying sound oh yeah well we did it and the tranquility returns to the pond here. Uh, Lady Murthash lies upon the stone walkway, uh, bloodied, beaten, unconscious. This creature is completely dismembered. And as you look about, you see many items of interest upon these columns. Of course, these things all belong to the dragon, Turlofloas, the red, the eternal flame. Taking any of them would surely provoke this dragon's ire, and as we all know, a dragon knows every single coin that is within their hoard. Reynold, one thing catches your eye here, a what looks like a very finely crafted uh, battle hammer. Mm. Uh, looks... Reynold's just going to go over and observe, but he's not going to touch it. Uh, it looks finely made, perhaps, and you sense the magical power emanating from it. It is um, instantly um, identifiable as more powerful than the hammer that you wield. Very nice. Well, uh, I kind of looked at everyone else. So, we promised those guys we wouldn't steal. And if we do steal this turtle voice, the actual one, not the imposter that's been running around biting at us, is going to come after us and hunt us for all eternity. Now, I kind of don't want to deal with that personally. Um, how do we all feel as a group? I mean, we got what we came for. How's, how's everyone kind of feeling? You're muted. We in, we experienced the imposter, and that was Bad. so much fun in of itself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I can only imagine what the real thing looks like. Um, yeah, I mean that's true. So I vote we don't take anything. I vote right? we might leave some things behind. <laughs> Wait, except <laughs> Just to maybe get on these. Good side. No, we're. You your... Yeah, I I don the the uh, don the robe and the scepter. You got the whole set now. Yeah, feel All powerful. Right, well, you Majesty, let's get you uh, feel different in your place of honor. Yeah. Now we don't have to do anything from here, right? Like, from my memory, we're not leaving anyone behind that we know of. We flew in here with just us three, right? And, then, and and the sole purpose of coming here was to get this robe and scepter. There's some stuff going on about some dragon eggs being stolen for, um, you know, uh, experiments, magical experiments, turn them into like mutants. But 
it, well, we can't solve everyone's problems. Right, right. And I feel like my issue may take precedence. So I can teleport us out of here. I can get us back to one of, one of the safe havens I've made. And we can be safe in a circle and we can sleep and then we can rest. Now, I'll remind issue... you that Lunar has uh, his uh, dragon owl tethered. Yes, we, c- we cannot forget sinful sorrow. Mm. Well, we can take sinful sorrow and then we can go back to a safe haven and then we will go to sleep and rest. Uh, I don't know how close I have a safe haven to these this mountain where we have to do this ritual, but. I don't know. I guess the question is to you guys. Do you want to teleport out of here or I can make a temple to sleep in for the night and we can kind of like stay around this area? How does the group feel? Meaning within the volcano well, I mean, or on the surface of the volcano? We, I think we would get out of here first of all. I don't want to okay, sleep in this, in this lair. Let's leave this place. Yeah, we got no more business around here, do we? I don't think so, no. I mean, we could kill yeah, an no, imposter, but... Nah, it's too many folk around here want to kill us. Nah. Let's go and get your dragon back, your dragon out. And well, I guess we'll start to leave. Um, I will cast again <laughs> another aura of vitality. Um, I will give. Who's low? I'm I'm pretty hurt. So we can sort that I'm out when bad. you all make it to uh, the location for your rest. And uh, you have successfully retrieved the robes and the scepter of the Dragon Watcher, completing uh, a key part of your quest to gain the throne of the Dragon Watcher, uh, Reynold. Out time. So now Woo-hoo. you possess all three artifacts. The next step will be to journey set. to Dragon's Deep to claim your throne. Uh, and uh, in doing so, <clears throat> this will give you access to Dragon's Deep as a mortal, uh, not a dragon. And that will allow you to protect or, um, you know, find any golden eggs that may remain so that Shogar flees, the light, can be reincarnated uh, if all goes well. But After so when... we kill an elder dragon, of course. I just, I just want to make something very clear. I have uh, sworn an oath of vengeance against this fucking dragon. (laughs) Because it got the best of us. Oh, the one that from this session. Oh, yes. The the imposter. He's on my list. I have a list. Oh, you too? And we compare like lists for a second. (laughs) This uh, dragon's name, before you leave this area, we won't be spending much more time here on the volcano, but uh, perhaps you'll run into the Azers again. And you can, um, you know, tell them what has happened. They inform you the name of this dragon is Akis, A K Y S. Yeah, I, I tell him like, yeah, we kind we kind of messed up good. Uh, you you might want to try and find them, and then we go find our dragon elves. I put down a temple. We get inside and we fucking go to sleep. Very good. And we'll end the adventure there for tonight. Uh, I appreciate everybody hanging out. Bodhi, you want to run through a few ways that people can contact us or hang out or whatnot? Yeah, I'd love to do that before I pass away from dehydration because my room is very warm <laughs> right now. Um, great way to start a uh, little uh, bit. Uh, we have a YouTube channel at the Heroes Era. We have a Twitter at the Heroes Era. We have a Instagram page, the underscore Heroes Era. It was different. It was taken already. The one without the underscore we have a discord channel that we use to communicate and run one shots and such it is uh the heroes era uh we should have some uh a link to it in our twitch description uh we are also doing uh podcasts uh those are from what i've been told uh where you get your podcast at so widely distributed i believe and uh, if anyone else wants to plug their socials or some such, uh, you oh. have to find me. Uh, you, I'm not giving it up, but if you find me and let me know, I might follow you back. Who knows? Uh, anyone else? That's it. Until next time, the adventure nope. continues. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.